Hey, you there. Are you American and old enough to vote? And are you sick and tired of the polarizing and divisive party politics that have been plaguing your country? Are you interested in an alternative? Then you might want to check out this Unity 2020 thing. It's an idea by Brett Weinstein, the professor who got fired from Evergreen College for standing up against woke insanity. It's kind of like the intellectual dark web, but in politics. They've taken two candidates, one from each side of the political spectrum, Tulsi Gabbard and Dan Crenshaw. And with your support, they can still get on the ballot in time for the November elections. Check out their website for more info, articlesofunity.org. Unity 2020, for people who are tired of partisanship, but want leadership to move the country forward. Just say no to Donald and Joe. What's up, everyone? I'm J.A. Brown. Uh, you might notice I uh, re rearranged my bookshelf a little bit, added some more books. It's always good to have more books. Uh, anyway, uh, I wanted to make this video about uh, something that has to do with freedom of speech. And this is, of course, coming right after uh, this professor at University of Southern California was not quite fired, but pretty much the closest thing to fired because he used a Chinese word that sounded just like the N-word in English. Uh, anyway, this video is not about that. Uh, this video is about Dutch politician Geert Wilders. You might have heard of him. Uh, he was found guilty recently in court of offending a group of people, namely Moroccans, although he was not given a punishment, more on that later. I'm going to keep this video short and to the point because I don't have time to go really in-depth on a subject, although I like making videos like that, but I don't have the time right now. So um, You might have heard of Geert Wilders. I, I, I'm Dutch, I live in the Netherlands, so I, I've known, I've been aware of Geert Wilders for a long time, ever since he quit uh, the so-called Liberal Party in 2006, which really isn't a very liberal party in any sense of the word, but never mind that, to found his own party, the uh, Freedom Party, not to be confused with the Ngata Freedom Party from South Africa. Uh, so I know him mostly as, and everyone in the Netherlands knows him, mostly as this sort of xenophobic politician who is most known for his strong anti-Islam stance and for defending the rights of um, ethnically Dutch people, which by most people's estimation puts him pretty firmly uh, on the right wing, although I would hesitate to call him far right. Uh, and his party has been doing consistently well in the polls, sometimes being the largest party in the polls, but come election time they are never the, the largest party although they were almost part of the, the government one time. Anyway, uh, this, this, this court case uh, started after, in 2014, at one of his, his election rallies, uh, he made this remark asking the audience whether they wanted more or fewer Moroccans in the Netherlands. Zou ik van iedereen hier een antwoord willen hebben op de volgende drie vragen? Drie vragen Alsjeblieft, geef een helder antwoord die onze partij, de PVV, definiëren. En de eerste vraag is, willen jullie meer of minder Europese Unie? En de tweede, de tweede vraag is, misschien nog belangrijker, willen jullie meer of minder Partij van de Arbeid? En de derde vraag is, en ik mag het eigenlijk niet zeggen, want er wordt aangifte tegen je gedaan. En misschien zijn er zelfs D66 officieren die het een proces aandoen. Maar de vrijheid van meningsuiting is een groot goed. En we hebben niets gezegd wat niet mag. We hebben niets gezegd wat niet klopt. Dus ik vraag aan jullie, willen jullie in deze stad en in Nederland meer of minder Marokkanen? Nou, 
dan gaan we dat regelen. And then a whole bunch of people, including an association of Moroccan Dutch people, sued him. And then the public prosecutor actually decided to press charges against him for discriminating. Omdat wij hem verdenken uh, tot het aanzetten tot haat en discriminatie en het beledigen van een uh, groep mensen op grond van ras. Wat is de aanleiding? De aanleiding zijn de uitlatingen die hij in maart van dit jaar heeft gedaan. En wij zijn van mening dat die uitlatingen dusdanig zijn uh, dat die een verdenking opleveren tot ja, het, 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 uh, het aanzetten tot haat en discriminatie en het beledigen op grond van ras. En er zijn ook heel veel uh, aangiftes gekomen naar aanleiding van die uitlatingen. Hoeveel aangiftes? Er zijn 6400 aangiftes binnengekomen. Now, a bit of background here. In, in the Netherlands, as in all civilized countries, obviously, it's illegal to discriminate, especially on the basis of race or ethnicity and stuff like that. But interestingly, uh, apparently in Dutch law, uh, the definition of discrimination includes offending people. Now, Moroccans have got kind of a bad image in the Netherlands. Even though there are many Moroccans who are very successful and productive members of society, for example, the Speaker of the House of Commons and the Mayor of Rotterdam are both Moroccan. Uh, Moroccans also feature quite highly in the crime statistics and often cause a nuisance in certain, certain neighborhoods. Their image is kind of a, uh, comparable to Hispanics in America or Pakistanis and Bangladeshis in the UK. Um, like those latter groups, they are Muslim, which uh, sometimes puts them at odds with the values of Dutch society. Although, interestingly, Turks, who are also Muslim, uh, don't have nearly as, as bad of a reputation as Moroccans. It's really mostly the crime and their perceived bad attitude that, that is causing this. And so uh, the charges brought against Wilders were uh, offending a group of people, uh, inciting discrimination, and inciting hatred. And this, this went on and on, and he was already uh, found guilty in 2016, but then he appealed the decision, and uh, just last week or so he was again found guilty in a higher court. He was found guilty on all three counts, so offending a group of people, in this case Moroccans, um, inciting hatred towards them and inciting discrimination against them. However, the judge decided not to give him any punishment, saying that he had already been punished enough. But again, Wilders is planning to appeal again and take it to the Supreme Court, uh, because he thinks he should not have been found guilty at all. Okay, now let's talk about what I think of this. My point is not so much that uh, Rilders should not have been found guilty, but more importantly, that the fact that uh, anti-discrimination laws in the Netherlands include uh, offense, causing offense in the, in the definition of discrimination is a bad thing and that we should not want that. And my argument basically boils down to Free speech is the mechanism by which we keep our society functioning. In order to be able to think, you have to risk being offensive. If you are not allowed to offend people, then you can barely say anything, because nothing you say is guaranteed to never offend anyone. In fact, everything you say is bound to offend at least one person. Criticizing people becomes impossible, because even criticizing ideas will become impossible because people will take any criticism of their ideas as offense. Now you might say, okay, you can cause a little offense, but not too much. So how much is too much? How do you decide? Who decides? The government? I don't think so. Imagine that the government decides that critiquing the policies of the government is offensive and makes it illegal. Then you get a situation like what's happening in Belarus right now. So no, I don't think that's a good idea. I think that all ideas, all speech should be openly thrown out there in the open so that by a public process we, of debate, we can review each idea to separate the wheat from the chaff and each opinion to, to sort out the good ideas and the good opinions from the bad ones. 
Because if you don't do that, people will go underground with their, their hateful opinions and their shitty opinions. And you get things like the KKK and you get all sorts of secret hate groups. I, don't, I really don't think that's a good idea. Okay, another frequently heard argument is... Okay, that's all well and good, but what about directly inciting violence? Some people argue that the line should be drawn at inciting violence. For example, that's what Jordan Peterson thinks. Uh, and I, I think there is certainly an argument to be made for that. Uh, people who make that argument often liken it to uh, yelling fire at a crowded theater. But I think there is a difference between the two. The difference being that if you shout fire in a crowded theater, then any reasonable person would be expected to believe that there's actually a fire, because that's that's what we do, right? When when we communicate, we assume that the other people have good intentions. So if someone says fire, we there there's no time to think about is this person speaking the truth or not. We just assume that there is actually fire and we will run out of the theater, potentially causing all kinds of dangerous situations. And so I, I would say that the person can definitely be held responsible. But now compare this, for example, to another situation in which I tell you uh, or anyone who wants to hear it to, to go to a synagogue on Friday night with a machine gun and shoot as many Jews as you can. Now, should that be illegal? I don't know. Uh, uh, me saying that in itself does not actually cause violence or damage to anyone but if some idiot who hears that decides to actually do it then should i be held responsible i i would say no because every person still has responsibility for their own actions and no reasonable person who hears that would would actually go and do it you would say man this guy is crazy why is he telling people to to go kill jews you wouldn't actually do it so uh, and, and I would hope that uh, when you're on trial for murder, yeah, but this guy J.A. Brown told me to do it, would not fly as a legal defense. I, I very much hope not. So no, I, I would say that you can make an argument that even inciting violence should not be illegal because uh, incitement is one thing and the actual violence is still perpetrated by someone who is responsible for their own actions. But... Even if, you, even if you say that uh, inciting violence should be illegal, what Wilders did, did not fall under inciting violence, but inciting discrimination and hatred. Those are very different things. And as far as I'm aware, I don't know Dutch law very well, but as far as I'm aware, they are not very clearly defined. And I assume that uh, other countries will have similar laws, or if they don't have them now, they will soon see also Bill C-16 in Canada. Uh, so yeah, I think that is a very dangerous territory there. You, 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 we're landing in a, a very vague territory when we, when we include things like inciting discrimination, inciting hatred into the law. How can you define that and who decides especially? All right, that's pretty much what I have to say on this topic. Uh, a couple of more things before I end the video. I mentioned Belarus earlier, a country where people are actually being beaten and thrown into prison for their speech, for criticizing the president and the government. There's, a, there's an IT company uh, with a, a called Pandadoc with a Belarusian founder. Uh, the company is registered in, in the States but they have an office in Minsk and four of their employees were arrested on some bogus charges drummed up to take out these people who are potentially a danger to the government because they're critical of its politics. So, and I think that's terrible. That is really horrible and we should not let that happen. Uh, not anywhere, but especially not in a, a European country, which is supposed to be a free country. And uh, please spread this page and use this hashtag SavePandaDoc to draw attention to this, this injustice. All right. Um, what else can I say? Some more news about me. Uh, I'm now a Twitch streamer. I haven't streamed anything yet except one very brief three minutes uh, test stream, which you can watch here on my profile. Uh, so please uh, go ahead and follow me on there as well. 
Uh, make sure to watch my other YouTube videos. Some of you might wonder what about that Steven Pinker video you announced on Twitter. Well, uh, I actually already uploaded that and it's, it's, it's been on, on YouTube for a long time. I just haven't made it public because of certain reasons, which I will explain later and I will make that public soon. Um, leave a comment below. Check out my webpage, which I plan to uh, give a substantial update sometime later this week. I've got a couple cool things planned in the future, so definitely stay tuned for that. Uh, check me out on Locals and support me there if you want me to m have more time to make videos like this. And that's it, folks. There you go. Uh, please bear in mind that your right to free speech is really important, so do whatever you can to stand up for it and keep it. All right, that's it for now. I'll be back soon. Jeffrey Epstein didn't kill himself. Peace out.